George the Tech. Go ahead, drop it and tell me what's happening. Hit drop the it. button, hit the button. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, a little longer. Okay, I'm clear. You can drop it. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's exciting. Send you a picture if you want. Give me your number, I'll text it to you. Hopefully, the only one. <laughs> You're getting sweaty. That's not right. You're getting sweaty and nervous. <laughs> a little. <laughs> That's, that's perfect. That's great. And that's what it takes to receive a Studio Brick Pro. So we're here, we're assembling a 5x6 Studio Bix Pro. They give us a really good uh, assembly manual, PDF, but that's really for a more generic sized booth. It's not the exact same booth as what we're assembling. And there's a little bit of confusion we had to figure out about the floor and how this piece here, this support beam is oriented. We were gonna go across, because it seemed to fit across more sensibly, but then we had all this under, underlying insulation and it all had to be cut to fit that way. It didn't make sense. So now we've kind of figured it out and we seem to have come across the proper orientation of the cross beam and the underlayment insulation, which will keep resonances from slipping underneath the booth and slipping into the booth. Because in this home, Right next door in the other room across the hall is a professional pianist professor who is playing right now. So he has to be able to be in here, record his audiobooks, and not hear his wife across the hall playing on a full-sized German Steinway piano. <laughs> so yeah, that looks pretty good now. It jams in there. It just sort of jams in. Yeah. 
And that thing kind of just floats in there, yep. sort of, essentially. Now we can lay the floor pieces down, but it looks like we might have to lift this piece out because it's got to go that way. And then... Yeah, the problem with the instructions is the instructions assume that this is a m many segmented floor. So as you'll see, the assumption is that the floor is made out of six sections and it has a lot more going on and thereby the pieces fit in in a different way. We only have two very large floor sections and they have to fit into this channel. So, well, we're about to find out how possible that is. And it turns out, no, you definitely want to put your floor down first and then put row one of walls on, at least with this size booth. This is a five by six. They told us to put the door handles on the door before putting the door on the booth for safety reasons. They don't say why. And I think the reason is they don't want you getting, <laughs> they don't want you to put it together without the door handle, have it fully assembled while someone's standing inside and realize they can't get out. So the door handles have to go on first. Very important detail. It's not in the manual. What are you doing? I am putting foam padding from the packaging on the corners to protect against the straps that we are going to use, which is our magic suck it up technique. We're going to give the whole booth a bear hug. And just give the booth a bear hug so all these little seams come in nice and tight. Yeah. Extra special assembly secret. That's why you say subscribe to George the Tech. <laughs> you get all the secrets right here. That's it. So here we go. We're giving the booth a big bear hug. That's it. Just tapping on it pulls on these seams. Sucks everything in. There's no seams over here at all. This side's right on. tight. Very important part of having a small enclosed space sounding good is low frequency control. And these are bass traps. Backing paper. So only one side of this bass trap has adhesive. The, the side facing the end here in this case. So we tuck that side in first. So the adhesive is going to make a firm grab. And then we push the other side in and make sure the foam is tucked in behind the side wall panels. It looks nice and neat. So this is the VO Edition version of the booth with the additional VO Edition materials like the wall mount bracket and a shelving unit that would go right here. However, and I think this is the way to go, really, if you're going to really do these booths right. Lewis bought an uplift desk to go in here. So now we're going to put everything on the desk, including this pole from Yellowtech to hold his mic arm and his copy holder that come with the booth. So all this stuff will go up and down 
with the desk. So he can be a, an audiobook narrator, sit down comfortably, or he can be a standing voice talent. We'll have to check clearance on that. After installing something like this, it's always nice to leave a little personal touch. I keep, try to keep some of these headphone hangers in my car and just leave that behind. Nobody ever thinks of it. No booth ever includes it. So this one I love. Headphone can hide underneath. Just held on with spring tension. Really simple. I love Studio Bricks booths. I hate the wire management that uses these things. They go around your cables, create a seal. You have to peel exactly the right number of rings out of these to make a tight seal. And then they slip into a square hole, two of them on top of each other, stacked. And then you clamp that whole thing together with a bolt. And it makes this tight seal. And it's hard enough when the thing is right here. It's a lot harder when it's back here. So this is the ambient noise level outside the booth of the piano from next door. This is wife's music studio. Ton of sound coming through these hollow corridors. The doors help a little bit, not much. <laughs> 